Hello, beautiful people. There's a lot to do in the big wide world of Eternum, and sometimes it can be hard to focus in on what you should be doing when you step into the game. Like any other MMO, I mean action RPG, there's some daily and weekly activities that you can complete when you need some ideas for how to get started when you log in. Just sit back and relax while I tell you about New World Dailies. Good news is, a lot of these dailies and weeklies involve making gold, which we could all use more of. First up, there's the daily concealed vaults that you get from looting literally any three chests in the game. It doesn't even have to be a proper chest. It could also be a little supply cache. When opened, these concealed vaults give you a diamond gypsum, some moats, and between 50 and 200 coins. So opening your daily concealed vaults is also the equivalent of getting one gypsum orb every single day. I should add that you're not guaranteed a concealed vault on your first three chest loots, but you'll get them fast, don't worry. Next, we're heading to Cutlass Keys to do our daily at the Well of Fortune. Make sure to bring your Mystic Doubloons with you. First, we're going to buy the Gold Cursed Epic Crates that cost 35 Mystic Doubloons. Hopefully you like gambling because you might just get some upgrades for your gear set, or some resources. After we buy the Gold Cursed Crates, we're going to scroll down and buy the Daily Gypsum Orbs. For tan Mystic Doubloons, you get 5 Gypsum Orbs, it's actually a steal of a deal and you should be doing this every day. When you open the crates, you have a chance to roll up to 725 gear from them, but there's no loot bias so you could literally get anything. I didn't get very lucky this time, but that's okay because we're not out much. Every day you can make a few thousand, yes, a few thousand, gold by doing your daily random mutated expedition queues. The mutator bonus cash is given to anyone who queues a random mutated expedition. When open, you get a thousand coins and 10,000 faction tokens. If you queue as a tank or healer, you'll also get a mutator roll bonus cash. These caches have 500 coins and a thousand faction tokens inside of them. Also very nice. Now I know that the text on the examine says 150 and 100 coins, but it's wrong. You can see me opening the caches here, and it is indeed 1,500 gold. And finally, if you get queued into an expedition that is lower than your highest unlocked level, every day you can also get one mutator carry bonus cache. Inside of this, you'll find a nice little 100 coins, bringing our daily total up to 2,600 coins, and 11,000 faction tokens for running two expeditions. And that's not counting any gold that you make while running the dungeon and afterwards from selling and salvaging your loot. That means that you can easily make upwards of 3,000 coins or more from running two expeditions every day. That's nothing to sleep on. If you still need more gold, there's another daily that you can throw into the rotation. Every day you can get two lost sacks of coins from a major breach cache. And you can get this sack from closing a major corrupted portal. The minor ones do not work for getting the sack of coins, but you can do a low-level major corrupted portal, and it won't take very long at all. There are low-level corrupted portals in the starter areas, so maybe look around the map in Windsward, Everfall, Brightwood, or Monarch's Bluff for level 25 and 35 portals. You could also join a Merc portal group to clear high-level major portals quickly. The lost sack of coins will give you 250 gold, so that's 500 in total from just the sacks. You will also get some corrupted shards from the major breach cache. Depending on your server, these could also be worth a pretty penny, so expect a few hundred gold from this daily. Okay guys, if you have some more time on your hands, you can do a daily elite chest run, ECR, also known as a world tour or WT. The world tour takes you on a, well, a tour of the world. You and a bunch of people will go loot elite chests in elite areas that are too hard for just a few people to take on. An entire world tour is going to take hours. You do not have to commit that kind of time to it if you don't want to. You can hop in and out of the world tour whenever you want. Skip stops that you don't enjoy or that you don't find rewarding enough. You can get a lot from a world tour. First, there's gold. Every time you loot an elite chest, there's a rare chance that you find a golden scarab. Depending on the server you're on, these can be worth anywhere from 1,000 to over 1,000 coins each. You can also find other things to sell. High level gear with some good perks can get a few hundred coins. I even found a trophy upgrade piece in Cutlass Keys that got me a few hundred. And on top of that, the chests in Cutlass Keys give you Mystic Doubloons to pad your doubloon stack. 
World tours are also great for dark matter. You have a chance to find some every time you loot an elite chest. They're also great for weapon experience. Bring along a weapon you want to level up and get two birds down with one stone. Horde birds. Did you know that every day the first three faction missions that you hand in will give you a daily bonus? This means more experience and tokens. Triple rate to be exact. A fast way to get this done is to do the three PvP missions in Great Cleave. There are a lot of ways to get faction tokens and you're probably going to need every last one of them because at the end game stage you're going to need a lot of faction tokens to upgrade your gear. Chromatic seals are bought at the faction shop and cost 5,000 gold and 20,000 faction tokens each and they can only be purchased once per day. So not only are the faction missions a daily but buying a chromatic seal is as well. You can also buy three gypsum orbs from the faction shop every day, but they're going to set you back 7,000 faction tokens each. If you've got some tokens to spare, I do recommend buying them. You can never have too many gypsum orbs. If you do the Great Cleave PvP missions, this daily is only going to take you about 4 minutes to complete, which isn't a bad time commitment at all. Okay, so while we're on the subject, I also want to talk about a few weeklies that I think are very important to incorporate into your gameplay. First, there's the weekly cache of gold and matter that you can make at a gypsum kiln. This cache costs 20 gypsum orbs to make and in return gives you 1500 gold coins and 250 dark matter. So I'm not going to say that you absolutely should do this every week, but some newer players might find it useful. At the end game, you're going to want to keep your gypsum orbs. 20 is a lot of cough up, especially when you can use them to make more than that 1500 gold if you've leveled some of your skills up. You're also going to need those orbs to upgrade your gear. But if you're a newer player, you might consider buying this cash mostly because of the dark matter. If you find yourself needing dark matter, this is certainly going to help step your numbers up. I don't like that cash personally, but I wanted you to know that it was an option. Now we're heading back to Cutlass Keys for two weeklies. First up, there's the Gold Cursed Coconut or Golden Coconut. You can only loot one Golden Coconut each week from the Cursed Smiths, the free-for-all PvP area of Cutlass Keys. The coconut comes from the bigger chest found in the area called Cursed Hordes. And no, you don't lose your coconut in PvP, so don't even worry about anyone fighting you after you secure your coconut. Just grab it and get the heck out of there. The second weekly in Cutlass Keys is the 500 doubloon chest that you can open with the glittering key. You make the key at the Well of Fortune in the Cutlass Keys settlement, and then you head over to the border wall of the Cursed Smiths and open the chest. Keep in mind there are two chests by the border wall, but they are the same exact chest. One's up north and one is down south. What I like to do is make my key, go loot the chest, and then head into the PvP area to grab my coconut. And finally, there are a few things that I just want to mention. There are other dailies in New World. For example, the Elite Soul Trials is technically a daily, but if you already have the artifact from them, they're just not worth doing right now. You can get some really bad gear, one singular dark matter, and 25 gold coins. Honestly, kind of a slap in the face and not much reason to load up a trial. I'm hoping that they buff the rewards in the future so that they can become a daily. That's why I'm mentioning them, just in case that happens. If you're here in the future and they are worth doing, yay! They have buffed many of the other daily rewards in the game, so it's not a crazy idea. There are also repeatable daily quests and cutlass keys that give you mystic doubloons upon completion. I don't think they're quite worth doing. You get 35 doubloons for each one, but there are other more efficient ways to farm doubloons. That said, anything that you're willing to do or that you enjoy doing is worth it so they get a mention. If you want to, it's definitely a valid option. And that's it. Those are the main dailies and weeklies that you should consider doing in New World. Some are good, some are okay, some are great, and some are meh. But you could come out of it with a few thousand gold coins, several gypsum orbs, and many other important things that you'll need as you continue to play. What dailies and weeklies do you do often? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, like, subscribe, share, and most importantly, be kind to one another. See you next time, friends!